Hey guys, welcome back to Mel Tips and Tricks. I've got a great video for you guys today. We're gonna grind in the six jaw chuck. The last video I did, I actually rebuilt the chuck. It was a rusty, solid mass, nothing moved in it. But before we get to grinding and sin, let's talk about some of the controversy on that last video. I had a lot of people not like the hammer that I used to actually break free these jaws. And let me explain why I used the hammer I did. The suggestion was I should have used a lead hammer or a brass hammer, and you guys aren't wrong, but they weren't working. They weren't working right. And part of it is, is when you go with a softer hammer, what happens is it's more of a thud instead of a ting, and it wasn't breaking the rust loose. And that's what I want to do. So I went in with a very light body hammer. And if you notice in the video, I was tapping, I wasn't hitting. When I tried to go with the brass or lead, I had to hit really hard and I was worried about that. So I went in and tapped it and when you tap with the hard metal against the hard metal you get more of a ting and I felt that was breaking the rust better than hitting it harder with a lead or brass hammer. So that being said, let's talk about why do you grind in a six jaw chuck? Well the reason is you need to get all the jaws in alignment. Instead of having three, which is a three jaw chuck, all three jaws are going to approach and give equal pressure all the way around. And a four jaw chuck, you're gonna move those in and out to get equal pressure all the way around. But on a six jaw chuck, you have a chance of variances and lining up. Now, other people also ask, well, since I've got an adjustable back on this and I can actually change the concentricity of this chuck and get the part lined up, why don't I do that? Well, there's a really a good reason for that. This chuck is out about, well, let's check it. So this chuck is at about 15 thousandths, which is way, way out. Definitely needs to be reground, but I could, like I said, change the back and make it work that way. But the reason I can't do that is, because I tried it, is it shifts so much of it, or so much of the chuck, that the lathe is no longer in balance because of that. So what I've kind of really discovered is, you can move it around about 5 thousandths. Past that, you're going to be getting out of balance. And if you have to go past 5 thousandths, well, you probably need to do what we're gonna do in this video. So let's talk about grinding in this chuck. Now, first of all, you need to realize that chucks have a lot of, what do I wanna say, air in it. There's a lot of slop in the scroll and the way the jaw is attached to it. And they have to because if you think about that scroll that's in here that allows these jaws to move in and out, the radius has changed on each scroll or each thread. The engineering behind setting these up is really pretty complicated, so there's never really good pressure on any one of these teeth, and they have to put slop in there so they will actually work together. So what does that mean? That means we have to preload these jaws so we can grind them in and get them accurate. So with a set of jaws in there, when they come pressing together, no matter where my part is, these jaws are going to press out a little bit. And that's when we grind them in, is we want to get them preset like that. So we're gonna do some tricks here. Now, some people think that you can just put a pipe in here or a piece of metal when this comes down and keep that in alignment. Well, it doesn't work that way because most of your pressure is gonna be out here. And I don't know about you guys, but when I put pieces in my jaws, sometimes they don't go all the way back. So we wanna make sure that we can get this pressed in and swung out. So what we wanna do is be able to put a ring in here and grind this out. Well, we can't do that very easily. So I'm gonna show you my technique for doing this. I am not saying it is the right way to do it. I'm just saying it's my way to do it. And I'm gonna add a new feature to the jaws. I'm gonna actually bring these in, clamp them down on a piece of solid stock, and then I'm going to cut out right here, and I'm gonna cut out and put a recess in there so I can put a part in there that allows me to grind through it. I know this is kind of crazy that I'm adding a feature to this, but it's a feature that you're gonna find really beneficial. How many of you guys get a washer and the hole in the washer, it's the wrong side? So you're gonna really like this feature just for that.
So we got the ring made. Now we're going to mount up the grinder. So here's something really cool. This is something I made. Had a lot of fun making. It's probably one of the first real projects I've made in the shop since I've moved here. mount the grinder and this is a Metabo. You could use any grinder that you have available to you. Here's another great little device. Something I just kind of whipped up. I had a bunch of extra spare parts and this is for dressing the stone. Dressing the stone only takes a few seconds and it's something you want to be able to do quick and easy. The dressing of the stone is really set up to do a couple things for you. One is it's going to clean out all the garbage that's in here and it's going to give you nice sharp edges on here on the wheel. Also it balances it and trues it up for you. But before we do all this stuff, before we start to grind, there's something that you have to do and you need to align and level your lathe. Now there is two words there, align and level, and I'd like to do a whole video on that. If you guys want to see me do how to align a lathe, I can do that. Just put some notes in the comment and if I get enough interested people, I'll do that. So why you have to align this is, well we have our chuck, if the bed is twisted in any way and we grind this out, we're not going to get an accurate grind. Therefore, we're kind of defeating the purpose of what we're trying to do with this video. Let's bring you in a little bit closer and let's start to do some grinding. And we're going to try to set up a really light, light grind. I'm just going to work right off the edge at the beginning. We're going to slow this way, way down. Okay, we're at 45 RPMs. So I think we've had a successful grind. I just realized I forgot to do something. <laughs> Let me turn the machine off. So I forgot to do something. I should have put down a towel here um, to help collect the, the grinding dust and stuff. So before I move the lathe around, let's clean this up a bit. And now I think we have a very successful grind on the inside here. I think that just looks fantastic. We'll test it a little bit later. Now we're going to talk about doing the outside grind. And now since we've got this all set up, now the outside grind, again, we have to look at the jaws. So when we put pressure on these jaws, remember they're going to kink out. Well now we're going to put pressure on the outside so they're actually going to kink in. So we've got to do the same thing here. We developed a ring here to get that grip. Now we're going to do a ring on the opposite and then we're going to grind these outside surfaces, find a larger ring, and then do those surfaces. So let's keep going. Okay guys, we have an epic failure here. This is very inconsistent. This thing is out right now 18 thousandths. If I take the test bar and I rotate it, put it in other positions, it might only be out three thousandths. So this is what's frustrating is this grind didn't work. Now why didn't it work? Now if the positioning was consistent all the way around, I know I wouldn't have a problem. I tested this test bar on my three jaw chuck 
everything worked out really well, very consistent, but here it is just whacked. So we've got two variables here. One is we have the new back plate that we put on there and it came from China. So it may not have been finished correctly and it might have a little bit of wobble because of that, but I don't think that's it. I think it is the grease that I used. Now you remember I used the spray on gear lube and I put a little note on there, it was a bad idea. It is a bad idea. But fortunately, now this is really kind of fun that WD-40 contacted me a while back and said, Dale, we would like to support your channel. And they sent me out a bunch of product. And this is one they actually didn't send me. I actually bought it the other day. This is WD-40 Specialist Heavy Duty Extreme Pressure Grease. And we're gonna use this on this chuck because I think that's what my problem is, is the grease wasn't thick enough, so the jaws aren't moving consistently. And when you have six jaws moving on that scroll, well, there's a lot of little variances that are happening. So we're gonna go with this grease from WD-40. We're gonna have to take the whole chuck apart, which just to let you guys know, after you grind in your chuck, you have to take it apart anyway because of the grinding dust that has gotten in here. All right, guys, the chuck is finally done. I got to say, it did push me to my limits. So I've gone through the whole chuck. I've taken it apart, re-greased it. Actually, I got rid of the old grease, greased it up, put it all back together again, ground it. I studied, actually, the scroll to see what type of shape it is. And I got to say, it's in marginal shape. And I'm not sure if that is because of the rust or it just wasn't machined well. When I look at like a really good chuck, like one of my buck chucks, you look at the scroll and the scroll actually looks ground. They're beautiful. This one here doesn't look that way. When I flipped it over and looked at the gears and really studied those, they weren't cut very well. Um, they were inconsistent in their width. So I'm a little concerned that this chuck really wasn't built that well and that's one of the problems I had. But I will say the grease from WD-40 definitely cleaned up the accuracy a lot. Right now, I'm getting a readout about two thousandths and four thousandths. It's not dead on consistent, but at least it's doable now. One thing you need to know about chucks is it's smart to use all three of these to clamp down on one item. Go out and you test your chuck, see what happens. Now you don't crank down the first one, you crank you lightly do it all the way around, kind of like what you would do with tighten down the head on an engine. Now, if you think I'm a little crazy there, if you take a buck chuck, let me grab one here. This one here is also up to be done. Now, this is a true adjust, so it's got four set screws to adjust this around. Similar to what this one does, this one only has three. But if you notice, right here, it only has one way to tighten this down. So when you tighten it down, it's always consistent, always the same amount of pressure on the jaws. And I gotta say that improved the accuracy of this chuck a lot. If I just tightened down on one, sometimes I was out as much as nine thousandths. But as long as I developed a consistent formula for tightening, I was consistent between uh, two tenths or two thousandths and four thousandths. So the chuck is not perfect, but it's very usable. Now I know I told you I was gonna show you how to grind in the outside jaws. I gotta say guys, I need to get away from this project. But I gotta say I'm really excited about teaming up with WD-40 and having them sponsor this video because with their support, I'm able to do these videos. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the uh, like button if you like the video. Also, leave your comments. I love reading them. And even if they're, what do I want to say, not to my taste, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We've got a lot more exciting projects coming up. Also, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook, and there's links below for those. All right, guys, until next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks.